weeks. All right, um, and the president's uh, poll numbers are dropping. Uh, the, head, the headline though. in the New York Post today, go frisk yourself. <laughs> we, we've got this, this stop and frisk policy here in New York City. Uh, many have said that it's one of the reasons the crime is so low here. A number, in, including the guy who wants to be the next mayor, says, I would get rid of it. The good news for people, if you like it, apparently the judge who ruled on this has been booted and the federal monitors for this have been put on hold. Hurrah. Judge Scheindlin, uh, Ray Kelly is a friend of mine, the police commissioner. He's coming on the radio program today at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. This judge was an activist judge as absolutely, as absolutely uh, uh, biased as you could possibly get. She invited this lawsuit. She openly invited it in court. She recruited the plaintiffs for the lawsuit to bring the action wait, she against the that. NYPD. <laughs> and the appellate court said, wait a second. Not, not only are you biased, but you also you created this case in a large measure. What you did was inappropriate. So stop and frisk has been reinstated in terms of its constitutional. So now, the, what happens to the monitor? The monitor is on, on hold. hold. There is okay. no, there is no mandate now for that monitor. New York is the safest big city on earth. Chicago has three and a half times the homicide rate of New York, and Chicago has a very similar demographic. You can't say that Look at New the York numbers. is richer. We, or, have the numbers. Uh, we we are clearly doing the right thing in New York. What this judge did with this judicial activism, look at that. This is real, ladies and gentlemen. And whose lives are being saved by stop and frisk? It is precisely the people, the black and Latino young person, most susceptible to being killed by gun violence. These are the people being protected by stop and frisk. As Rudy Giuliani said in your previous hour, the uh, America's mayor, the mayor uh, in New York during the 90s, this situation now, do you want to go back to where we had over 2,000 homicides a year? Right now we're running at under 400. Who is being saved? It's not the Park Avenue matrons who are being saved. Right. It's the kid. It's the 18-year-old from Brownsville. It's the 17-year-old uh, the from the South Bronx. Those are the children being saved by stop and frisk. You kept the balance, of course, personal liberties and, and the constitutional requirement that everybody be treated with dignity with the reality that if you don't stop a bunch of kids on the corner and say, what do you, hey, what's that bulge I see in your pocket there, uh, Ace? If you don't do that, if you wait for him to commit the crime, then the murder will have been told. Mm -hmm. The city blood will be flowing. I think you've got to uh, reinstate You're this right. as soon as possible. Ray Kelly was right. Mayor Bloomberg was right. 20 years of Republican administrations in New York City has done a good thing. I'm not saying that the Democrats can't handle it also, but if they, if they cave to the most vocal minority within the minority, Look out. then the city right. will skid back to, remember, I was born here. I spent most of my life in this town. I've watched this. Uh, this is a process that is very uh, necessary. You need a strong hand in New York. Bearing in mind that people's dignity has to be right. protected and their constitutional rights. Well, it's proven right. to save lives. It certainly has. The numbers are there. Thank you. Steve. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyway, and Elizabeth, we'll thank you again well, for the dress code. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, Geraldo. I just got a new nickname, yeah. Ace. I'm Ace. You are Ace. Uh, you yeah. are Ace, Brian. Hey, coming up nearly two years after pushing